A warm welcome to Thriving in Christ. In this episode of Renewal Conversation, I have the joy and honor to interview Dr. Randa Anderson. She's a dear friend and co laborer in Christ. She's the president of Camper Orthodox Christian Association in Medicine, Psychology, and Religion, where she's the president and I'm the medical chair. And we had such a wonderful time thinking through ministry, thinking through supporting professionals that I'm so in debt for her wisdom, for her professional expertise and leadership. And I'm really delighted that she said yes to come and be interviewed on Renewal Conversations. Dr. Randa is a licensed clinical psychologist who provides outpatient psychotherapy to adults, adolescents, and children in her private practice, both in Park Ridge and remotely online. And she's a member of the Orthodox Christian Counseling Institute, which is a network of mental health professionals providing services to Orthodox Christians in the Chicagoland area. She completed her PhD in psychology at the University of Chicago and had her clinical psychology training at the University of Chicago Hospitals and Michael Rees Medical Center. And I really love that she aims to unite concepts from psychology and Christian Orthodox in ways that can be practically applied to everyday life. And therefore, she presents workshops and retreats at parishes across Pan Orthodox community in Chicago and recorded many podcasts for Orthodox Christian Network and Ancient Faith Radio. And Dr. Rand is committed to offering her professional knowledge and skills to the Orthodox community through her volunteer work. So you heard me say she's the president of Ocamper, Orthodox Christian Medicine, Psychology, and Religion. And also, she was a consultant in the mental health ministries of the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops in the United States. And this is actually how we met. And she was part, actually, of the working group who developed the National Directory of Orthodox Mental Health Providers. And one last big piece and, and of volunteer work that she's bringing, besides helping in the parish, is through the organization Thriving in Ministries program, which where Dr. Anderson facilitates peer learning group for clergy wives in Chicago area. And she also served on the board. So with that, I'm really excited to dive in. And if you're a regular, welcome back. And if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Yuana Popa from Team for the Soul. I just love helping professional Christian women and servant leaders to regenerate on the go and prevent burnout, because that's a big block to feeling that joy for Christ. And also moving from grief to hope, and also achieve the highest potential in Christ, which in Orthodox Christian faith, we talk about theosis, we talk about the union with God. And that I'm really passionate about in order for the Christian women and professional and servant leaders to keep on giving and serving Christ. So I'm all about empowering the women to work through their vocation to their ministry. It could be at home, could be in a parish, could be in vocation to keep on giving because I think that's so essential. And with that, I am delighted that you're here. And if you want to connect with me, teamforthesoul.com, that's my website. You can send a message through there or just connect at teamforthesoul.com. And we usually have links down below with things that might be of interest for you. And I'm so encouraging you to check them out and really find what you really need so that I can support you. And with that, let's dive in. A warm welcome, Dr. Rand. I'm so excited you are here in our renewal conversation, part of the Thriving in Christ. And we know each other for years. We've collaborated in many places, and I'm not going to spoil it. I'll let you talk about your journey and the tips that and wisdom that you might have for our listeners. But just a big thank you for being here. It is delightful to be here. I always enjoy talking with you. A little different to be recorded while we... <laughs> have one of our Friday coffee talks, but I'm happy to be here and share what I can. Yes, yes. And as we start, let's think through one of the themes that I'm so curious about and it's so cool to hear the journey in your vocation, journey in Christ, you know, whatever you want to share about that. It's just so nice to hear other people understanding what draw us to this vocation of giving. So you're such a giver. I mean, you're a professional licensed psychologist. You also do a lot of volunteer work. You're the board member of a camper and do many other things. Like, 
what makes you want to do this? And tell us about a bit your vocation and your giving in Christ. Yeah, so my vocation and my giving really intersect, right, as you just said, and I've always thought of myself, not just as a clinical psychologist, but as an orthodox clinical psychologist. So really, when I think about my journey, you know, my faith journey and my professional, my vocational journey really intertwined from day one, and it also kind of connects with the leadership that I've done throughout my life within the church. So I'm cradle Orthodox, as they say, I was baptized as a baby. And even going back further, my family's from the Middle East. So we are part of the Christian minority of Jordan and of Palestine. And my extended family, you know, they can, we can trace our Orthodox roots back at least as far as the 1800s in Madaba, Jordan, when my family was, they were considered protectors of the Orthodox Church there. So it's really very much a part of my history. But it really wasn't until high school when I feel like I started to own my faith. And I used to lay awake at night kind of having debates in my mind about the Orthodox stance on this versus the world and what the world thinks. And, yeah. you know, and I would, I would think it all through. And if I can just pause for a second, if you're listening and you're Orthodox, you know exactly what Dr. Renda is talking about. If you're not, if you're listening here and you're wondering what is Orthodoxy, it's Orthodox Christianity. It goes all the way to Christ. It's in the Eastern part of the world. And um, so that's what Dr. Renda is referring. So you were saying, sorry yeah. to interrupt in high school. Yeah. So I would, I would think through matters of faith and ultimately came to own the belief, the church, the Orthodox church's beliefs as my own. And yeah. And then I was very active in the church. I, you know, was teen soy or the youth group president. And I was involved in the youth group at the regional level as well. And we would have these regional gatherings of youth from California and Arizona, where I was growing up and uh, went to church camp, did all those things. Um, but I think one of which I wanted to share when I think about, okay, how did I become a giver and how that kind of connects with my vocation and my faith. When I was in middle school, we had a Sunday school project based on the parable of the talents, which hopefully your listeners are familiar with, but it's that wonderful parable that Christ tells about how a master leaves on a journey and he gives his servants either five talents or two talents or one talent. And those uh, servants who multiplied their gifts and gave them to their master were rewarded. And the one who was afraid and buried his gift and did nothing with it was sent to where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> I love that quote. I think it's funny. But anyway, um, so it made an impression on me. And we did this project where we were, all the youth were given either you know, we were all given either $5 or $2 or $1. And what could we do, you know, to multiply it? And That's I, you so know, cool. What a cool it was, cool. it was, it was experiential learning. Yeah, at its is, you were right? actually running church school. This is a great lesson. Wow. I love it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think that's something that made an impression on me, this idea of use your talents for the glory of God, mm. period, you know. You have been given gifts and, uh, you know, it's our call to use them. And so, so that is something that was always made an impression on me. So then I, you know, graduated high school, went to college and went to college in Southern California where most of my church friends lived. Um, and so that sort of continued in my formation. There was an Orthodox priest who was the physics professor at <laughs> Pomona College where I went to college and so you know got to continue uh, living out my faith in college and then I moved 
uh, to Chicago for graduate school mm -hmm. and had some challenges because I went to the University of Chicago and at that time in Hyde Park, there was no Orthodox church. Mm -hmm. And I had no family here. I had like, I knew no one when I moved here. This was my big adventure to move across the country and go to graduate school and be in and out in four years. Well, that was my first error <laughs> thinking because no one finishes the program at U of C in four years, but I certainly did not. But I'm um, still in Chicago. <laughs> and I'm still in Chicago, right? I met my husband here. We settled here. We raised our family here. But um, anyway, so yeah, so I came and it was hard anyone and have a church nearby. And I was so grounded in my faith that to not have that was hard. And, um, but I believe that, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit, you know, brings people into our lives when we least expect it. And for me, it was mm -hmm. sitting in the, the dorm cafeteria eating by myself when this woman came and asked if she could join me. It was early, maybe in the first month of grad school. And she had this long Greek last name. Ah. <laughs> and I said, wait, are you Orthodox? Yes. Said, yeah, are you? And I'm like, yeah. And so, oh, and wow. we're friends to this day. She's a professor now in Florida, but she was from Chicago. So she knew how to, she knew where the churches were and she knew who, how to do public transportation to get to them. And, and she knew other Orthodox that were already at the university as well. And um, so that was, that was so helpful. I was able then to connect. And then I went to an activities fair at the university and there were two students in the divinity school who were trying to start an Orthodox Christian fellowship. Oh, wow. And so I joined with them and together we got OCF going at the university of Chicago and OCF uh, Orthodox Christian Fellowship, which is Orthodox an Christian Fellowship. Okay, so you just started that at the university. So cool. Yeah, yeah. And so um, along with these two div school, one of whom is now a professor at Fordham University and, you know, obviously still very involved in the church. Uh, you know, I found my people and and that was really wonderful. So fast forward, you know, met my husband, got married in the church. He became Orthodox. He had not been raised okay. in any faith tradition at all. So he had an adult baptism and was surrounded by other college and graduate students at that baptism, which was another very impressive thing in my life. And we raised our family in the church. And when I think about, I'm skipping ahead a little, but when I think about daily renewal, just like I learned um, growing up, I think that we have to renew daily our faith, right? Yes. Like we can't get complacent. Right. And so I try every day to do something to renew my faith, whether that's reading a scripture or Sometimes it's working on ministry, you know, and thinking about how to give to others through this work. So that's, so that's cool. yeah, I have a couple of things that I wanted to share from what you're saying. I'm really touched. It seems like through your journey, there was something about trusting God. Like, mm -hmm. yes, adventure. I'm taking a step. I don't know what's going to happen, but you trust a God. Is that right? Exactly. Absolutely. Without question, you know, and, and you develop that, I think, through prayer and through reading scripture and reading religious books and staying in community, you know, with other Christians, with other Orthodox. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. And what I really appreciate what you said, you said, I own my own beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so crucial. So if you're multitasking as a listener, this is a time to come back beliefs i make the point as well that god exists if we believe or not it's a given right but our beliefs can help us and it's so important that we consider them that we're not afraid of digging into our beliefs and like you wrestled you mentioned that that was so beautiful like it's okay to wrestle with the beliefs and really use our critical thinking or wisdom from other people as well to really logically also upgrade our beliefs if we need to and I'm curious about just a couple of minutes, like 
what was that like for you to think about, okay, Orthodox Christian beliefs versus the world? You Maybe you have a, a tip for the listener, like how to navigate that. Because some of you as your listener, you might not wrestle with that, but you might encounter someone who is wrestling, right? So it'll be really cool to think, well, how do I, how do you work with beliefs? Yeah. So I think in working or thinking about religious beliefs, you know, it's kind of a fine balance between owning it, like I said, but not relying only on yourself. You know, there's, you know, I mean, I was 16 years old. How wise was I at 16 years old, right? So I think leaning on those wiser than yourself and in the Orthodox faith tradition, that's relying on clergy or women in the church who are educated and leaders and, you know, certainly looking at what the the church fathers and mothers have taught over the years, I think in other faith traditions, they have elders in the church that you know, you look to for guidance. But it was a conscious effort. Absolutely a conscious effort. Figure it out for yourself and you were not shy about it. You're like, no, No, that's gonna be true. That's so beautiful. And I had friends in high school who were other faith traditions and we would actually debate each other at lunch. You know, we would talk about these things. It mattered to all of us in different ways. And uh and yeah, we we talked it through. Yeah. So I, for all of us, it helps solidify our our faith. Yes, yes, and clarify. And I think that is such an important piece of wisdom. Sometimes we are afraid of asking questions or or wrestling with something. Does that mean I don't have faith? Does that mean I like no, this is a healthy mm-hmm. process. So I'm so absolutely. Happy. You know, for many years I um taught eighth grade Sunday school. And I taught it with my husband, and we loved it. And our curriculum was when we actually developed ourselves and it was on the parables. Oh, and we would, we would hold the Bible up at the beginning of every church school year and say, everything you need to know is here. You know, (laughs) I love it. And then we really encourage those eighth graders to wrestle. As you said, I love that word. It is a wrestling with ideas, with faith, with what you feel in your heart, what you experience. And it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I have one more little thing to ask. What that was the your talent? How many dollars did you get and what did you do with them? <laughs> I think actually they didn't the church school didn't want to, you know, make anyone feel bad by giving them one talent. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. It was just more like let's think it's through more symbolic. And as I recall, <laughs> we pulled our funds and had a bake sale or something. So it, oh, it, it, so they lost a little in translation perhaps, but um but the idea of it you know, yes and it's also awesome. brought the community, the the classroom together, right? Let let's here I have talents and we have this money. Let's see what we can do with it. Oh that's so beautiful. I love it. Wow. So fast forward to now, you're doing so many things. Do you want to share a bit about what's happening right now? I know you're in a lot of you're in a lot of boards and you're supporting many ministries. So do you want to mm-hmm. share a bit about that? Sure. Do you want to hear um, about the specific ministries or whatever you want, whatever okay. you want to share? All right. All right. Yeah, I am doing a lot right now, but I love it. You know, one thing I, I can't remember if I said or not is, you know, I shared my faith journey, but professionally, I always kind of had in my mind that I didn't just want to be a psychologist. I wanted to be an Orthodox psychologist. I didn't really know what that meant early on, and I think I'm still figuring it out, um, but I've, I've really spent my professional life at that intersection of faith and practice. And so for me, that includes multiple activities. That is having a private practice. Um, I'm certainly open to seeing anyone, um, but I specifically um, offer my services to Orthodox Christians in the Chicago area. And most of my clients are Orthodox and they appreciate being able to uh, share with someone who has the same faith tradition. That's important for a variety of reasons. So there's my actual professional work, 
But I also serve as president of the Orthodox Christian Association of Medicine, Psychology, and Religion, which you are a board member of as well. And, you know, that is really about a few things. It's about serving the professional, the professional in medicine, psychology, or religion, or in allied fields. And we do that through offering monthly online gatherings that we call our community of practice event. We do that through offering a conference every year and just really trying to build a community of Orthodox care providers so that none of us feel alone in our work and so that we all can think about how our faith can inform and enhance our work um, as we all provide service in some way. We're all givers in some way. So that's Oak Camper. I also, um, through Oak Camper, I serve as a consultant to the mental health ministries of the Assembly of Orthodox Bishops. So, um, and through that, which I think that's where I met you. If you're not Orthodox, or if you are, and you might not know this, this the Assembly of Bishops is the gathering of all the bishops in the Orthodox Christian jurisdiction, which doesn't have the many jurisdictions. So it's kind of their gathering where they all consult and work together. Exactly. That is saying, and it's so good. If you are a mental health professional, Christian Orthodox, you might want to get on that directory. Yeah. So I was leading led a while ago. So, and I heard so many good stories for people searching and finding what they needed. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's how we met. You were on that committee and um, so the National Directory of Orthodox Mental Health Providers, again, because often people want to um, share their most private, intimate concerns with someone of the same faith tradition. And so that directory, which is online, is available for people to find an Orthodox therapist. And I'm so that directory is set, but the work of the mental health ministries continues and you know, they they offer other projects and go to the website and see it. I think I gave you that website to share. Um, we'll put it in so assembly of bishops, I think is dot org. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then the other board that I'm on is called thriving in ministries. It is um, an organization of the Orthodox church in America that offers uh, peer learning groups for clergy and clergy wives. Mm-hmm. And I love that work because it's it's actually not specifically mental health, right? These aren't support groups or therapy groups. These are learning groups. And so uh, in facilitating a group, I get to think of interesting topics for us to talk about. And it can be anything from building trust to um, managing our use of digital media and technology and other aspects of health and wellness. So, yeah, I do that as well. well. I know there are a lot of clergy wives that are listening to this. So you might want to Google that as well. Thriving Ministries. And you can reach out to them if you want to form a group. Usually the groups are five, six women. Mm-hmm. Obviously, clergy can do that as well. So you might tell your your husband as well if you're listening to this. And once there is a group, it doesn't it can be online or in person. So Correct. Speak- or hybrid. My group is hybrid. Yeah, so just because you're in an area that you might not have a lot of other uh, churches or or priests that you know, and it's pan orthodox, so that's a great thing Correct. to get that mixture. So it's a it's a great resource. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I and I think the last thing that I do, which I'm getting called to do more and more, is I offer workshops and lectures, seminars, podcasts on topics at that intersection of faith and psychology. Um, And uh, most recently, I spoke to the Young Adult League of Chicago. These are Orthodox young adults, uh, college students, young professionals. And they wanted me to speak on a mental health topic. Yes. And I thought, who's going to go to that workshop? You know, there's so much stigma even among our youth still today. So I called it, by the way, mental disorders, they're not no one's fault, like, right, right, unnecessary stigma, indeed, indeed. Um, Anyway, so I titled the talk Finding Peace Under Pressure. And the room was packed, because 
I think young adults, like most of us, we're looking to find peace and we're feeling pressure. And how do we deal with that? So, yeah. That's wonderful. And maybe you have a couple of nuggets for us that you could mm -hmm. share for the Christian women professionals and servant leaders that they can take from mm -hmm. this, maybe from your last talk or for something else. Yes, we all want peace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you want me to share that right now? Yeah. 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 If you yeah. Want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so, um, in, in terms of the work I do as a psychologist is often, um, kind of framed in cognitive behavioral therapy, which is all about really understanding and modifying your thoughts so that you will have, you know, healthier feelings basically. Right. So, so something that I talk about all the time in my presentations is how to mind your mind, right? Really think about what you're thinking about. Yes, what is, I love what that. Are, mind your mind. Mind your mind. What is your self-talk? You know, what are you, what are you saying to yourself? And if you really listen to the words you're saying to yourself, are they true? Yes, exactly. We're so on the same page, Dr. Yeah, Rand. Right. You know, and I think a lot of us walk around with assumptions. Yes. That aren't necessarily true assumptions. You know, you can't really base them in fact. You know, I mean, I talk all the time with people. You're getting upset about something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yes, yeah. And just because it's it's the thoughts are swirling in our mind and we have seven seven thousands of them every day, that doesn't make them true. That mm -hmm. it's okay to pause and really mm -hmm. mind your mind, as you're saying, to really get to the assumptions. Is it really true? There's such a big difference between beliefs and truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's um there's a quote from Saint Paisios that I use in, I think, just about every talk I give where I'm addressing this and I love it. He says, is everything really the way it appears to you? I love always, it. always put a question mark after every thought. Mm. If you can put two question marks, better still. Three, right. better still. I'm summarizing, but you know, his point was, you know, you look at things with a negative slant, you need to question that. And that's, you know, that's what I encourage people often to do. Like, let's really look at that. That's beautiful. Okay. If you're multitasking as a listener, now is the time to really come back <laughs> and maybe listen because this is huge, right? Question every thought, sometimes two question marks. It's even, mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. especially if they're negatives, right? We're so prone to right. have I don't know, three, five times more negative thoughts. So it's so critical to really get into this and get to the bottom of this. And actually, I'm curious how you deal with this. I have in one of my courses, a process which is used in psychology, right? How to think through what happens, how to think, what are the thoughts, what are the emotions, what are the underlying belief, and then move in what's God's belief? How is that going to replace? Can we replace mm -hmm. it like that? Uh, and I find it's so helpful. And I'm curious, what process do you use to yeah. anything like a little tidbit that maybe the listener can uh, use? Yeah, yeah. So there, there are two models that depending on who I'm talking to, I'll use one or the other. You know, one model is to take the thought and put it on trial. What's the evidence for it? What's I love the that. Evidence exactly. against, That's right. Know, like, it, you know, so that's one model. Another model is more of that scientist model. You know, what's your hypothesis here? That thought is a hypothesis. How can you test it? What can you find that supports it? What can you find that, you know, discredits it? You know, and and so really those two models resonate with people. You know, one or the other usually resonates and can become then a more ingrained habit. So that when you learn to identify those negative thoughts that are making you feel angry, sad, anxious, you know, whatever, then you can sort of develop that habit of really looking at it. Yeah. You know, and sometimes the thought is valid for sure, exactly. right? Exactly. Sometimes it's people really have said something rotten to you and it makes you feel bad, you know, but then you deal with it. 
you know. Exactly. So it's not like you're just missing them. Like I, I work with parts and inner critic and whatnot, or we're just understanding thoughts and emotion. And it's like, they're kind of like a fire alarm, right? It, we have to pause and really think. It's not that we're dismissing. You know, sometimes right. I hear this, just silence your inner critic. Well, sometimes the inner critic has a point, right? We need to befriend it. Yeah. You know, family systems, that's how they do. befriend your reactions. Like talk with them and really get into that. And I love what you said. So if I'm hearing correctly, if people, if you're more oriented towards the future, find a thought and work towards hypothesis. Okay, what's my hypothesis? And let's look if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. And if you're more, have evidence already, if you can look into your past, that's the other mm -hmm. option. Well, mm -hmm. let's pause and look into the evidence. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Um, that wasn't what I was saying, but that's a great way of thinking about it. You certainly can do that, right? I mean, I think in both cases, you're you're looking to prove or disprove, right? Yes. You know, and you can think of it as a scientific experiment, or you can think of it as a jury, you know, judge and jury, right? Yes, yes. And if you find a judge and jury, you find evidence that already happened, correct? Right. Versus right. in the experiment, you have to kind of set up the experiment like a scientist and prove it, which is the future piece. Is that right? Yeah, you can you can think about that it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, absolutely. I just want to make sure I understand it. Cool. That's so exciting. That's so cool. Any other wisdom that you'd like to share or or nugget? Hmm. Oh, there's just so many. I know. I know. I mean, when you first asked me to do this, I thought what am I going to share? You know, and then I just really started thinking about everything that, you know, not just work with clients, but things that I try and offer when I am offering a, a talk. Then I think, I think in terms of mental health, really thinking about your mental health as mind, body, spirit, which I know is certainly something you cover, right? Yeah. I do um, find emotions, body and, and spirit, soul. Yeah. Right. And so really, knowing that sometimes you have to get your body healthy first, you know, you have to be exercising, you have to be eating right, getting enough sleep. These things impact how we feel throughout the day. You know, they can impact our mental health, you know, and minding your mind. We just talked about that, you know, and attending to your spiritual life, you know, your spiritual needs. I really love what you said about the body. Sometimes we, get so busy and we want to do so many things uh, in our vocation, in work, helping others. And we put ourselves on the bottom of the list, but then ignoring our body will have repercussions in time. And I think it just goes so well with our faith, right? We're psychosomatic beings. And it, I'm so glad you named that because the body, you can switch so much by attending to the body. Not that we have to become indulgent and whatnot, and we have to, you know what I mean? But there's a certain balance, and I encourage as a listener to know yourself. Like, how many hours do you actually really need? I mean, I wish I could get away just with six hours and a half, but I don't. My body really needs about seven and a half. Mm -hmm. And as much as I would like to run on less, it's just impossible. The same right. with food and eating. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it. It, it all, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting in the context of mental health, but yeah, you know, for, for your Christian clients, you know, it's about taking care of yourself as well. Right. And doing that, doing those things on a daily basis. So important um, as you teach. And I fully agree with, you know, that you have to attend to those areas every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, it's not necessarily even something for the to-do list. It's just something that becomes routine mm -hmm. as you um, develop those healthy habits. And it's so, so important on a daily basis. Yeah. Now, for many Christians and Christian women that I'm aware of, including myself at some point in time, it was hard to create that habit, not because, oh, I, I know I have to do it, but there's this lingering feeling or or thought that this is guilty or I am slothful or this or that. And I'm curious, I mean, it sounds like you've, you've from the beginning, get-go, you've had this, you knew you had to renew and one now. What would you say to someone that, I know I have to do it, but I'm still guilty. I feel so guilty and I shouldn't, yeah. right? They, there, there's the pool. They want to do it, but 
there are some emotions that pulls them back, right? Yeah. Many times, um, yeah. especially through the mind. How would you? Yeah, gosh, there's so much there. Um, yes, I think especially for mothers, there's a sense of, well, I have to take care of my kids first, you know, that there's that old analogy of being on an airplane and what do they tell us? Put the, you know, if, if the plane's in danger and the oxygen masks drop, put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then aid your child. Yes. Right? I was it, shocked when I heard this, when I flew first time over America with my infant baby, I was like, what are they talking about? Like, no. And then I'm like, okay, a dead mother is not really a good mother. <laughs> and that's true. A dead, tired mother is, is, you know, is a challenging one. Um, so I think, you know, knowing that it's hard to be effective in all the domains of your life, if you're not taking care of yourself, um, hopefully as a motivator. I think, you know, I heard a, this is for all the professional women in your group right now, um, even the ones maybe who aren't working outside the home, but I heard a, a seminar for psychologists uh, maybe five years ago on the ethics of self-care. And they were basically, it, and it was actually the seminar was put out by my malpractice insurance and you, and they were saying, you have an ethical obligation to take care of yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself, you have the potential to make mistakes mm -hmm. and do things that could ultimately hurt the people you're trying to help. I love that. This is so crucial. Okay. But if I'm so striking. Come back. Yeah. Come back responsibility as us as christian women and servant leaders and professionals or even at home to actually take care of ourselves otherwise we make mistakes that's what you're saying exactly you're at risk of making a mistake you know and um uh, that just has really stuck with me and and especially in the work i do with clergy and clergy wives sort of reminding them of that you know has been i think eye-opening for for many people so thank you so much for this and I'm wondering at this as we're wrapping up anything that you would like to share more about your work or something or project that you're doing that you would love the world to know more yeah um, well, I mentioned O Camper already, the Orthodox Christian Association of Medicine, Psychology, and Religion. Uh, we have an annual conference coming up uh, September 26th through 28th in Mendeline, Illinois. And we have an amazing panel of speakers. And I encourage people who are really interested in thinking about their faith and their work together you know, not compartmentalizing their lives, but really bringing vocation and uh, faith in one place, that the Ocamper Conference is a wonderful place to meet other people who are concerned about the same things. Um, and it's interdisciplinary, right? So there are physicians, there are chaplains, there are therapists, there are parish priests, there are physical therapists. I mean, there are people from many different fields who come yeah nurses, 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 nurses um what else life coaches there are research professors there's theologians there are oh you, social workers family therapists you name it any type of and, therapy yes yes so and some of them brought their spouses so actually at the last conference we had five engineers present <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> that was also pretty cool, right? Um, and if anyway. you're a Christian Orthodox, I know there is also an associate membership. So even if you're not necessarily in the discipline, right, yeah. then you could still join and be part of the conversation. It's so amazing. Like all Absolutely. Thinking from science, from psychology, from medicine, like all of that, it's, it, this, it's almost like a greenhouse of just amazing yeah. Ideas that get planted and grow together and and it's a community, right? So it's a way of really connecting with other people 
who care about many of the same things. And we don't always all agree, but that's okay because healthy debate just makes us all grow. Yes. I thank you for saying that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just, it's a wonderful organization. I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't think I did, but my first encounter with Oak Camper was actually when I was in graduate school, 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago. I don't know, a long time ago. And, um, and there, there was just a fledgling organization and they were having a conference in Chicago and they wanted to hear views from young adults. And there I was a young adult. <laughs> and so they said, come give a panel. Oh, they're fast forward three decades. Oh or how many decades? Yes. I had no idea. And so I, I had that early introduction to the organization and was impressed by it at the time, because here were all these leaders in these diverse fields coming together and talking about things that mattered both in faith and in clinical practice and scientific knowledge and um, really made an impression on me. And then I will say, I kind of, uh, I'm going to quote someone who said this to me. I, I appreciated Ocamper from afar for many years, you know, like kind of paid attention to when and where the conferences were. And, and I didn't really get involved again until 2019. And then here I am now, but um but it, it's it's always been a really special place to learn and grow and connect and yeah, yeah. I, hope, I hope your listeners will check us out yeah so camper.org we can put also the link and under and i am attest to that because i came across Ocamper. i think it must have been 2014 and i absolutely love it because that's the soup that I'm in, you know, between science, psychology, spiritual care, Christian faith. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Like how many national organizations are like that? So I've been hooked ever since. So here we are. Yeah, here we are. Exactly. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Any other words of wisdom or nuggets that you like to share as we're wrapping up or anything else? That's. Mm. I heard a priest say once in a sermon, and I love it, and I remember it daily, I try to, that I think your listeners will appreciate that, you know, again, getting back to using your gifts, wake up every morning and just say, here I am, Lord, here I am, do with me as you will, let me know how I can serve today, serve your people, serve you. And so, yeah, that, that little thought of here I am, Lord, here I am, use I me. Love I love it. Thank you for sharing that. And if you're in my programs with the Renewal in Action, it almost feels like that preparing for morning, wake up to my soul, wake up to God. That's a wonderful question. Here I am, Lord. Mm -hmm. oh, or it's actually a statement. It's not even a question, it's, right? It's an offering, right? It's an offering. It's an offering. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's so beautiful. You're welcome. Wow, such a great conversation. It's so nice to talk with you. And I know we've talked for many, many circumstances, but to hear your journey and the way you think, the way you work, the way you support people is just a, such an inspiration. And I hope if you're listening to this, you really get inspired and really there's something that transpired as you you talk, the sense of I'm owning my faith. I'm owning my life. I'm offering myself. It's okay to hear to all sorts of things, but filter, filter what's coming from outside and also filter from what's inside. Okay. What are my thoughts? Am I really, so the sense of discernment, mm -hmm. so it, it, take that in and think about it. It's okay. And yes, it's going to feel maybe a little hard at the beginning. Like if I'm going to try to check my thoughts Every day, like it's going to be a lot of thoughts, right? We have, I don't know how many thoughts a day, thousands and thousands, but start small and then keep it as a practice. And in time, it's going to solidify. Like, um, these Absolutely. are amazing, amazing nuggets that you offer today. So thank you so much, Dr. Randa. You are very welcome. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Randa, for coming on Thriving in Christ Renewal Conversations and for all the many nuggets of wisdom and regeneration. And I love the mind your mind. This is so cool. And thank you for sharing about your, your journey 
in Christ. It's so amazing and inspiring to hear from you. And thank you as a listener. I'm so delighted that you're here. You know me. I don't take your time for granted. So I'm really, really thrilled that you're here listening all the way to the end of the interview. And as we wrap up, I'm going to say a prayer. And before that, if you're ready to jump into Growing in Christ program, we'll put the link down there. If you're not ready there, go and sign up for Seeds of Renewal. I'm still offering for free for you. And I hope you'll be blessed. And I wish you a wonderful weekend. And I'll end with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for Dr. Randa, for her gift and her ministry and everything she's doing for her community and the church community. And I think and praise the listener that she's so fearfully and wonderfully made. May you continue to bless her, bless her ministry, bless her vocation, bless her family, her friends, her community, and everything she works on and envision all her projects and hopes and dreams. May you bless her abundantly. And I pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for your time and for this opportunity to connect online in space and time. I thank you for who you are. And I would love to hear in the chat how this episode impacted you. And until next time, I say goodbye for now.